Hey YouTube, it's Jeff back with another Hepahead beer review. Tonight I'm going to be doing Bell's Consecrator Doppelbach. Um, I know I said I was going to be doing a bunch of pumpkin beers, but honestly I'm pretty sick of pumpkin beers. I'm pretty sick of pumpkin flavored anything. After a month of pumpkin spiced coffee and beer and just the scent being everywhere, it's really starting to sicken me. Um, and I still have Kick from New Belgium and what's the other one? Uh, the Greater Pumpkin from Clipper City. Um, those ones will hopefully be a little bit different, being bourbon bourbon barrel aged, and the other one being hopefully a little bit more tart, um, being something a little bit different. But I wanted to go with something still kind of malty, but different kind of malt, um, and a little bit darker for the changing weather. Um, this one says on the back, it says a traditional Doppelbach fermented with an old world lager yeast, reddish brown in color with a mild hop profile. Consecrator is a well balanced full body beer with a smooth malty finish, and it's 8% alcohol by volume. Um, it doesn't have a brewed on date, but or a bottled on date. It's got a on the back, which I'm assuming I can go look it up, but being 8% alcohol and um, a strong lager, I'm not really worried about um, the flavor changing too much. It seems like malt sticks around for a little bit longer. Um, so someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but Doppelbach is kind of like a strong ale in that it's not an exact style, but more of a catch-all term for lagers of strong, like more strong lagers. So whereas a strong ale is an ale, this is a strong lager. Um, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just what I seem to be getting out of the story behind uh, Doppelbox. I uh, used to not really be into Doppelbox, um, but I'm starting to get into them a little bit more. I've had uh, Salvatore by Paul Lanner, and I've had the, which I didn't like at the time. Uh, I'll probably try that one again pretty soon. And I've just recently had Rabbiter from um, the Duck Rabbit Brewing Company out of Farmville, North Carolina, and I really, really enjoyed that one. And then I also had a um, the Maybach from Smutty Nose, which I also really enjoyed, which was more of a I mean, it's a, it's a Hellas box, so it's lighter, but still it's quite enjoyable. So hopefully this one will be uh, just as good. Um, wasn't able to get a Canadian breakfast out today. I'll look some more tomorrow and the day after that because uh, the one store that, I, that told me it was coming in tomorrow, it actually came in today for them, so was not able to get a bottle from them. So I figured I'd try another Michigan brewery. Um, all right, let's crack this open and give it a try. I think I got this one from Vintner's Wine Market in Charlotte, North Carolina, in the Arboretum. Um, pretty good bottle shop. They got a pretty rare collection. Kind of jack up their prices a little bit, but it's okay with some of the rare stuff they have. Normal Bell's cap, as you can see. Nothing special there. I'm serving this in my triple carmelier i believe that's how you pronounce it um tool glass i got this one from tasty beverage in raleigh it was only two bucks which i thought was amazing it's frosted and everything um so big shout out to them they're probably my favorite store nowadays all right let's get this poured as you can see extremely dark brown in color not much of a head to speak of but I can already smell the malt from where I am. You can see not much. You can see a little bit of light coming through there um, on camera. It's a little bit better here. Yeah, dark brown, copper. You're getting some lighter notes um, on the corners um, near the head, but just really thick. Some light coming through, but not too much. A little, a little hazy maybe, but not not too bad. It's got a good orangish color. A little bit of alcohol lacing. Not really too much though. All right, let's go with the smell. Mmm, that smells really malty. You're getting the the malt sweetness, the caramel, toffee, just maybe a little bit of roasted notes. I'm not really getting too many hops right now, but it's kind of cold, so maybe those will come out a little bit as it warms up. Overall, it just smells like a traditional Dachbull Bach, but it smells really good. So let's give it a try.
that's good. You get you get in all those rich, sweet, malty flavors that I was just talking about. You got in the smell, but honestly, initially it was a little thin from what I uh, was expecting. Maybe not so much in that sip, but definitely heavy on the tongue. Definitely a full medium body, if that makes any sense. On the fuller side of medium, maybe. Um, not as thick as like a stout or something like that, but definitely rich and malty, but not overpowering or anything like that. I'm really enjoying this one. It's not even the thickest or the sweetest of double box that I've had, but this is this is a really good one. I'm really enjoying this one. Um, so I'm going to let it warm up a little bit, and then I'll come back and uh, let you know about the differences, and I'm going to give you my verdict. See you in a little bit. Okay, and I'm back. It's been uh, probably about 25 minutes now. I let it warm up a lot um, while my uh, um, iMovie was analyzing... Um, the video for stabilization, but um, I've had to take a couple of sips of it, and it's changed a little bit, but it's it still is really good. It still is, it still is a little thin from what I'm used to, so it's actually not. It's actually kind of. I know I said before that it was on the the fuller side of medium body, but now it feels like it's a little bit on the lighter side of medium body, but still nothing wrong with it. Absolutely, really good. And the, the smell, the only difference that I can taste, I can't really smell any of the hops coming through there. Maybe I just have a, a broken sniffer, but um, I'm still getting all the toffee and the caramel and the, just the malt sweetness. I'm getting a little bit of alcohol towards the end, and it's coming through more in the taste. And that's the only the only downside that I can see to this beer, um, unless you like your double box a little thicker. That's the only downside that I can see to this one. Yeah, just get a really little bit of alcohol towards the end. Other than that, it's a really, really good beer, and I probably would buy more of it if it wasn't three dollars a bottle individually. It's probably about two fifty or something like that. If you get a four pack, it's probably, you can probably get a four. Well, I don't know. Four pack might be ten or twelve bucks. I think maybe they come in six packs. I'm not sure. Um, but. As far as a rating, I'm gonna have to give this one a solid B. It's really good. Um, probably the only thing that's holding it back is that it's not maybe more sweet or thicker, or just overall bigger. It's kind of a little smaller Doppelbach as far as I'm concerned. So I'm gonna give it an 86. Um, really good though. I think it comes out in the summertime, so this is a little bit older of a bottle. But if you can find it. Um, I would go for it. Um, Bell's never disappoints, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing I've had from them that I don't really like is their Java Stout. But other than that, I'm, I really enjoy uh, most of the stuff that they release. And uh, I will be doing a pumpkin beer next, though. Promise that. I can't. I can't tell you which one. But until then, cheers.